I'm Anil Kumar and this video is for my students who are just taking up a new course after a long time and they want to review about quadratic functions. So in this video we'll talk about how to find x-intercepts of quadratic functions. So the question here is how to calculate x-intercept given different forms. So as you know there are three different forms in which quadratic equations are given. One is called the standard forms, which is y equals to ax square plus bx plus c. This is the standard form. And then we have a form which could be written as y equals to a x minus x1 times x minus x2. These are the factors, so we prefer to call it factored form. And then we also have a form which is y equals to x minus p whole square. Uh, plus q. Now that is called the vertex form. So we're talking about these three different forms. So the quadratic equation could be in any one of these, right? So this is standard, okay? Uh, this one is factored, okay? And this is the vertex form. We'll now see how to find x-intercept given uh, equation in any of these forms. Uh, x intercepts means what? Let's understand that also since it's just a part of review. X intercept. X intercept means a point where graph crosses or touches or it could touch right, may not cross uh, x axis. Is that okay? So that is what the x-axis uh, x-intercept is and when it touches or crosses x-axis at that point what is the value of y? Well at that point y is equal to 0. So at x-intercept very critical y equals to 0. So that gives us an idea of finding the x-intercept. So I hope this basic concept is clear. Now before going further and talking in general terms that could be difficult let me just take some concrete example. So I'll take equations of this form. Let's take one as y equals to 2x squared uh, plus let's say 3x minus 5. Okay, so let's say this is one equation. As you can see, this is in standard form. How do I find x-intercept? So the idea is how to find x-intercept. So we have seen that for x-intercept, y equals to 0. So you need to substitute y equals to 0 in this equation and then find x-intercept. That is how you have to find. So what happens really is that if I substitute y equals to 0, I get 0 equals to 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Now, to find this solution, you could factor it, get it in this form, or you could use quadratic formula. So I'll prefer in general use quadratic formula, right? So don't think much about it. You could actually factor it, but I'll prefer to use quadratic formula. So let me give you a quadratic formula here. The quadratic formula to find the x value for any quadratic equation like this is x equals to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2 times a, right? You could also factor 5 times 2 is 10, which is minus 10 here. You need two numbers whose sum should be plus 3, and when you multiply, minus 10. So the numbers are 5 and minus 2, right? So you could easily factor and do this, right? But we'll use quadratic formula since uh, some standard form equations cannot be factored. So that's the only reason. And since it is a review, it's a good idea to give you all possibilities, right? So we'll just substitute these values and find possible values of x-intercept. a, b, and c, what are they? Just compare with this equation. You'll find a is 2, b is 3, and c is minus 5, right? So substitute those values. So we have minus 3 plus minus square root of uh, 3 square minus 4 times a is 2, right? And c is minus 5 divided by 2 times a, which is 2. Right, that's what you have. Feel free to use calculator and get your answer, right? So what we have here is 
let me rewrite we'll just calculate the inside part first 3 plus minus okay and this is 4 so it is this calculate minus and minus becomes plus so so we have square root of uh, 3 square I'll just write 4 I mean plus 4 times 2 times 5 right so which is 7 oh good so it is 7 so the square root of all this is 7 so as you see, you could get 1, 2 or no values at all. If this part is negative, then there are no x-intercept. Remember that part, right? So we call this b square minus 4 is c. That's kind of a test. Okay. So this gives you two values. One is for minus 3, I mean, minus 3 plus 7 over 4. The other one is minus 3 minus 7 over 4. Is it okay? So if you do this, you get... Uh, well, it get 4 over 4, which is 1. And if you do this, you get uh, minus 10 over 4, which is 2.5, right? Or 2.5, or, or let's write in fractions. Uh, so I get 5 over 2 minus, okay? So these are the values you get. So you know the, where the x-intercepts are. So that gives you the x-intercepts, correct? So let me write down the x-intercepts. So we have two x-intercepts. 1 is at 1, so we say 1, 0, y value 0, right? The other one is at, let's say, minus 2.5, so minus 2.5 and 0. So I hope the steps are clear to you. If given in standard form, use quadratic formula, you can also factor and get your answer, as you could have done in this case, correct? That's one. Now, let's consider the next form, which is the factored form. So we are already given equation in factored form. So the equation could be y equals to, let's say, minus 2, x minus 1 times x plus 3. Now in this case, you can read the value. And the values are, it will make them 0. So y is 0 means if you want to make this to 0, x is 1 or x is minus 3. Do you see that? So we get x equals to, now let me not write the coordinates. When you are asked to find x-intercept, you can write like this also. x equals to what? x equals to 1 or equals to minus 3. So that becomes x-intercept. We know by default y has to be 0. Perfect. Well, let me share with you another example. We could have something like this also. Uh, let's say half. I'm just writing a variety of equation. x plus x plus 5 whole square. So in this case, there is only one x-intercept. Do you see that? And that is at uh, minus 5. So in this case, x-intercept is only 1. And this one is at minus 5. That makes it 0. Do you get it? So that is how you can find x-intercept when given in this form. And the last one here is the vertex form, which is y equals to. Uh, let me take a simple one here because, okay, uh, since it could create a lot of problems, let me write 2. I don't want to go at length, right? So x minus 3 whole square plus, let me take a number which is a good square, right? So let me write this as 8. Uh, I should write minus 2 here. Okay, so I'm ensuring that we have an x-intercept. Okay, making this minus ensures that there will be an x-intercept. You will notice that if these signs are same, no x-intercept, okay? If these signs are same, you'll not have x-intercept, okay? But if these signs are different, only then you have x-intercept. If this is not there, then it is easy. It's like previous example, correct? So that's kind of a tricky thing to uh, work out, uh, right, while making some questions like this. Now let's find x-intercept for this. Now that is tricky, okay? So what we do here, as we did earlier, we'll say let y equals to 0, so our equation will be I'll write y equals to 0 here. We have minus 2 x minus 3 whole square plus 8, right? So we basically have to solve this equation by isolating x. Do you see that? So see how we do it, right? It's kind of very tricky. Bring minus 8 to this side. So I'm doing here, right? Minus 8 equals to, I'm bringing this to this side, minus 2 x minus 3 whole square divide by minus 2. So we have x. I mean, minus 8 divided by minus 2 is x minus 3 whole square. And this is, of course, 4, right? Uh, 4 is x minus 3 whole square. Now what to do? Now you square root it. Perfect. 
So when you square root, so let me square root, and then we get this, and we get x minus 3. Is that okay? But whenever you square root, don't forget to put plus and minus. This is extremely, extremely important. So why? Okay, let's do this. So square root is plus and minus 2, and we get x minus 3. Why is it important? You know, minus 2 squared is what? Plus 4. Plus 2 squared is also plus 4. So we actually have two values. If you don't do plus and minus, you actually lose one of the roots. X-intercepts are also called solutions. Let me add those words here, important words. Solutions or roots. Okay, so uh, same thing as X-intercepts, right? With minor difference, which uh, we are not discussing at present. Okay, anyway, so what we get here is two solutions, right? X is e equals to 3 plus minus 2. So let's rearrange and we'll find 3 plus minus 2 equals to X. So you could get two values of x. If I do plus 2, I get 5. If I do minus 2, I get 1. So for this equation, we get two x-intercepts. So we'll write x-intercepts are at x equals to 5 and at 1. Do you see that? So the that is how you find x-intercepts when quadratic functions are given in uh, three standard forms. I mean, three different forms. One of them is called standard. The other one is factored and then the vertex form. I hope that's a good review. I took it a bit longer than required, but that gives you overall idea. So in this series, we'll take up how to find y-intercept and vertex and all other things for quadratic functions in four or five videos. That should give you excellent review on this topic. Thank you and all the best.